This program is sponsored by Sasol. Sasol, reaching new frontiers. Just the job. This is the job for me, just the job for me, just the job. <laughs> Just the job for you. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Just the Job. In this all new exciting series, we explore the different career opportunities that you may consider. Our two field investigators, Herku and Ananya, are currently at Sasso, the global player in chemicals and fuels. Today, they will be looking at a day in the life of a chemical engineer. So, let's check out what the wacky two are up to. Over to you guys. Thanks. We're here in front of the Sassel building in Sasselberg, and we're going to interview two awesome chemical engineers, Scott and Tyrone, AKA Biff and T-Bone. Yes, and they'll take us through some amazing processes in chemical engineering, and we'll see if chemical engineering is just a job for you. You didn't just say that. Yes, I did. You're so lame. <laughs> just the job for you. We're going to his evil lair. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, and you? you? Good, thank you. Oh wow, this is chaos. Oh, yeah, I'm really busy most of the time. That's why this is how it looks until mm. my yearly cleanup. Once a year, everything gets packed away and filed away. But otherwise, this is pretty much it. Study chemical engineering to do admin. No. Oh, okay. How long did you study? I took eight and a half years. Wow. I've studied, yeah, after school. Honours, PhD? Uh, yes, well, your degree after four years, you end up with honours, and then I did a master's, and after that, a PhD. Wow. So what do you do exactly? Well, this is pretty much day to day. You can see I've got my computer up and open. This is some modelling work that I'm busy with. I just wait for that to boot up. This is what I'm busy doing here. I'm trying to get uh, my model to match my experimental data as well as, pop, well, as good as I can. and. Um, Basically, pretty much day to day, uh, I do a lot of piloting work. Um, that's where I generated this data. I actually had a sort of a filtration system set up and generated some data, and now I'm busy trying to model it and make it useful. Uh, do you have a car? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I have a Taz, but you should ask uh, Tyrone that question. He's got an RS A3. Oh, very cool. Study so chemical engineering for the car. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you like your job? <laughs> Most days. <laughs> I think every job you have, you have days where it's, it's not that much fun. Normally when I'm doing my admin, then um, I'm not enjoying it, but it's very interesting. It changes all the time. There's fresh challenges and um, I get to work with some really cool people. So, yeah. Do you like your boss? My boss is awesome. Can we put that on the DVD, please? His boss is awesome. Yeah, do you like his daughter? He <laughs> doesn't have one. <laughs> Off the hook. They are mm -hmm. lucky. Yeah, yeah this yeah. time. What's fun about your job? What do you like most of your job? I guess the best part is when something that you've been working on and that you've you've been involved in is actually useful and makes a difference. Um, I've been involved in a couple of projects recently that have made a, a major difference to one of our overseas plants and and really got it working and, and to the point where it is is doing what it was designed to do. So that's always very cool when you see something implemented that, that you've been working on. So you're like Dexter? <laughs> uh, more or less. <laughs> well, I heard that um, chemical engineers aren't just like, they don't have one job. They're approximately four or five or different types of chemical engineers? Yeah, chemical engineering, there's a lot of different things you can do within okay. just chemical engineering. Um, you can do project management, you can be involved in the actual operation of, of the plants. There's design engineers who will design the process and then there's what I do, which is research and development. The, 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 the coolest one for me is the operations manager. You just get to like sit back and make sure everybody does their job. There is. It's a large application within engineering, first of all, and then also outside of it because you've been taught a way of, of thinking, problem solving, that sort of thing. You're actually in demand in the financial in industry, banking, that sort of thing wow. as well. So you can do just about anything. Not maybe. just chemistry. No. <laughs> and making <laughs> rotten not, air yeah. gas. <laughs> oh, wow. So, how does awesome. your day start exactly? Uh, this is where I typically sit down. I normally check through my emails if there's anything important that I have to do. Um, and then it's just on with whatever project you're busy with. Uh, I spend quite a bit of time in, in the lab at the moment and also I'm running a pilot plant. 
that uh, takes up a lot of my time. Always going down there, checking how it's going. And I actually have some nice software that I can I can view it on my computer, but mm -hmm. I'm certainly not tied down to my office. So. Let's go to the lab. We're gonna go <laughs> Dexter's lab. She's my baby. <laughs> what does this button do? Just the job for you. Did you know that Kemco engineers work on creating ultra-strong fibers and fabrics, biocompatible materials for implants and prosthetics, petrol, paper, jewelry, and so much more. We're going to sort out some PPE for you guys, so you can go to the lab safely. What is PPE? Uh, that's this, it's protective personal equipment. Or personal protective equipment. Such, such but, a huge uh, name for a jacket. That's true, but this can save your life, so. How? Uh, it's flame resistant, uh, oh. prevents burns, that sort of thing, and also doesn't, your skin's not exposed to acids and that sort of thing which can burn you. So. How is it flame resistant? Chemical processes or? Absolutely, chemical oh. engineers were involved. Mm. Oh, yeah. Alright guys, this is some PPE for you to keep you safe while you're in the lab. And we're also going to go out to the plant now now. And uh, this is what we have to wear whenever we go into the lab or out to the plant. Generally the hard hat is only when you're on the plant itself. But uh, I think you guys will look cool with these. So there so you go. Awesome. Oh, really? Safety glasses and a hard hat. He has a jacket. A jacket for you. This is not sold in retail stores, kids. <laughs> there you go. Why do we have to um, button up? Uh, it's just in case anything splashes on you, um, you get exposed to any chemicals, it's <gasps> much safer. Then I can be like Spider-Man. Like the Joker. <gasps> the Joker! Yeah! He got splashed on. I'm Superman, people. <laughs> you the wish. Superman of chemicals. Yeah, we're all set. What we're going to do now is we're going to head to the something called the Fischer-Tropsch demonstration reactor. quite an important piece of equipment for Sasol. It's where we take things done on the small scale and implement them on the larger scale. It's quite a, quite a complicated piece of equipment, but there are lots of really interesting things going on inside that we can talk about once we get there. Just the job. Why did they call you T-Bone? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it's comes from high school. There was an American guy who was there and uh, he had some friends which he called T-Bone. So it's traveled with me for about 10 years now. Oh, oh T-Bone! Yeah. <laughs> do, oh, yeah. do you have a nickname? X-Men. No, they actually called me Puff. Well, that was my high school nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why. Did you know chemical engineers discovered a way to break up chemical processes into smaller units and apply it to the human body and discover awesome things like artificial organs. Do -do. What is this exactly over here? It's huge! Yep, well this is one of the most important pieces of equipment for Sasol. This is something which we call our fischer tropsch demonstration reactor. This costs 250 million rand. Uh, wow. And inside there there's a tube. It's about uh, three quarters of a meter or 750 millimeters in diameter. And inside there we do the main chemical reaction. We test it and explore it to actually see how the big reactors that Sassel installs are going to perform. So that's what you do, you, yes. you test the stuff inside. Exactly, so there's quite a range of stuff that we do every day and here's where I get to take stuff on a smaller scale and put it on a much bigger scale. Um, if we take a look over there, you can see there are lots of pipes, there's lots of pumps, it all looks very complicated and confusing. But it's really, really exciting and interesting when you think about the chemical magic in a way that happens inside the reaction vessel. Have you ever climbed to the top? Yeah, I have. I've <gasps> climbed to the top once and uh, I forgot uh, one of my oh. safety badges up there and so I had to climb again. Uh, <laughs> so you're not scared of heights? Oh, well, you learn quickly not to be afraid of heights when you're up there. Um, you feel a bit like Edmund Hillary climbing Mount Everest. And this, this equipment here is actually going to benefit uh, a reactor which is in the Middle East which Sassel set up recently and uh, will help us to optimize our process and make it better. Um, there are about, about, I'd say 10 to 20 people working on this every single day. And oh, we've, yeah, well, wow. yeah. I thought it was like 400 people on this huge machine. Well, you see, that's one of the really exciting things. You get to do a lot of um, process coordination and a lot of computer technology gets implemented in the process to actually make your job easier on a daily basis. It's got its own problems, but it's very exciting. There's actually more to chemical engineering than we thought, hey? 
They use huge machines, tiny atoms and molecules, the computer outside. It's such a versatile job. Do you think there's 20 to 40 people working on this huge, magnificent machine over there? Wow, that is this so is... awesome. This is so exciting. So, the fischer chops process is a catalyzed chemical reaction in which a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is converted into liquid hydrocarbon. Hmm, not just a pretty face. Did you guys know that chemical engineers split the atom? scientifically disrupted. This is his natural habitat. Okay, so this is our lab, and we're going to show you some interesting laboratory experiments that uh, Tyrone has prepared for us. So, here we go. But let's look quickly here. Um, we've got a whole lot of equipment, and we can see some of the fancy numbers that are getting shown here. Um, what that tells you is things like temperature and pressure, because these all affect how your, your chemical process works at the end of the day. And if we take a look at the distillation column here, which Jackson and Sitilele helped me set up, um, we've got a blue liquid in here, okay? Wow. wow, it's so blue! It's just taking a little while to boil up. Um, I'm just taking this off so everyone can see, um, okay? This here actually measures temperature, and you learn about this through your studies. It's very important to be able to know what's going on. Um, so this measures the temperature, and inside, these are the kinds of fancy things that you sometimes find inside reaction vessels and distillation column. It's a specialized, it's called packing. It allows the liquid to mix very nicely with the gas and allows you to achieve your uh, chemical separations or chemical reactions. Hydrogen sheep will into nylon. Uh, will into nylon, that's an interesting one. Um, nylon actually comes from plants and not from sheep. Nylon! <laughs> <laughs> nylon! Oh, shut up! We actually produce a lot of nylon nitos synthetically as well, through chemicals that a place like Sassel might produce. So, wow. But no synthetic sheep. Sorry, shape. I made a mistake. <laughs> nylon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really cool process. Is it, what's it doing now? Well, we've managed to get our distillation column going. Sometimes things take a little while. Um, it's, a, it's a virtue. Correct. <laughs> and we began with magic water in our distillation column because it's magic yeah it's like the smurfs and um, what basically happens in distillation is you use boiling like very much what happens in a kettle and because some chemicals boil differently to other chemicals you can separate them if you get it right so the chemicals flow up the column they get cooled at the very top and then the lighter chemicals get separated from the heavier carrier chemicals. Well, tell us something about the pressure. I mean, what does the pressure have to do with this? Do you use atmospheric pressure? Which pressure do you use? Um, well, you can operate a column at any pressure, and we're actually operating this one at a low pressure in order to separate these chemicals. And uh, just think about it, whenever you boil water in Durban, it boils at about 100 degrees Celsius. Up here on the half felt, where Sassel is, boils at about 96 degrees Celsius or so. So pressure, it's just like the air pushing on the liquid is less here. So the liquid's able to boil at a lower temperature. So that's what's basically going on here. Gamedi, um, we've actually, we, we're fiddling with the pressure a little bit here, aren't we? Yes. Where do we do that? Is uh, that... <clears throat> what do you guys do with the pressure? Like Tehran has explained earlier on that uh, the pressure actually affects the boiling point of a mixture. Nice. This is for kids under the age of 18. Do try this at home. No, I'm only joking. Don't. I really don't. <laughs> what we've done is we've allowed material to flow overhead now. And if you look here, it's dripping. Okay. Mm. Gamedi did that for us. He opened a valve. You can see it was collects over here. This is where valves are very important in a process because it allows you to control things. And then you can open it up and it drips down. Can you see that this is a C3 or colorless liquid yeah. and this one here is blue. So we've been able to manipulate temperature and pressure using a distillation column to get a chemical that we want from a chemical mixture. Wow. 
<laughs> you know what this looks like? What? <laughs> Hubbly. Oh yeah, which flavor? <laughs> Cherry and mint. Um, where's the... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. With chemical science, you can make a soft drink into a volcano, just like this. What? <laughs> Wasn't that cool? This is a fume cupboard. Um, you've probably seen this. It's sometimes chemicals make a few fumes and things. Um, and again, it's to help you be safe. Like the rotten in gas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to be careful of gases. So I'm also going to put some gloves on just to be safe. Because it's not just handy handy here. Okay. Maybe you can say what's special about those gloves. Oh, what's special about these, these are chemically resistant gloves. So I can take some of these chemicals, I can put them on, I'll protect my hands. And certain things have got special properties. The same with this clothing. This clothing will protect me. Um, at other times, I've got different gloves. You can see I, I make my clothes very dirty. <laughs> um, but these protect awesome. me from temperature now. And let me think, those gloves were also developed by chemical engineers. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. So it's one chemical engineer helping the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Chemical engineers can get dirty. How awesome is this job? <laughs> Very awesome. But um, if we just take a look, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, how much is the average salary for, for a, well, a starting up salary for a chemical engineer? Uh, generally depends on your qualification. Um, uh, it's generally worth it once you start. and. Uh, Especially in R&D, when you've got a, a decent qualification, you move up through the ranks uh, fairly quickly. And uh, certainly, I, I would say we, we earn good money. Uh, and Tiban, what qualification do you have? Um, I've also got Dr. a... Dr. McNutt. Oh, oh, Dr. McNutt. Doctor. 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 It's a doctor. <laughs> Sorry, doctor. <laughs> doctor. But, yes, but don't doctor. take any medicine from me. I'm not <laughs> that kind of doctor. Scott's also a doctor. Oh, so Dr. Dr. Yes. What's your surname? Clifford. Dr. Dr. Clifford. Dr. McNutt. You sound kids. like vampires. Hopefully not. <laughs> Something really interesting. Chemical engineers, okay, except for the fact that they invented like anything and everything, is rubber. This <laughs> rubber. <laughs> they invented the rubber on your skateboards, on your bikes, on, I mean, even cars, wheels. It's like rubber is everywhere. Plastic is everywhere. Just the job. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to add a chemical it's going to make it bubble, okay? So, do you want to put that on and yes, put on the other one? Maybe you can explain oh, what's actually in there that's going to do the bubble. I yeah. am an evil scientist. Oh, so, what's going to happen is I put a chemical inside here called sodium carbonate. It's very similar to bicarb. So, it's stuff you put in your stomach when... Things um, aren't so good downstairs. Yeah, we're not so good. So, I've got some sodium carbonate in there. I've got some water. I'm putting a little bit of color so we can maybe see what's going on. And what we're going to do is, or what you're going to do, you're going to take some acid and you're going to squirt it in there. And it's going to create a little bit of bubbling. It won't be too aggressive. And what that bubbling, where that's coming from, is the carbon dioxide getting released. Because the acid pushes out the carbon dioxide. It's a little bit like when you throw sugar inside Coke and it goes flat. Oh. It pushes it out. So we're going to do the same thing again, except it's colored. And we're going to see some bubbles. Yeah, just, um, can you squirt it in the acid beaker over there? Just to make sure you I am squirting out. in the acid beaker. Yeah. What we have here is sodium carbonate and water with color. <laughs> We're going to add some acid and it's going to bubble. Okay, now you just have to look very carefully because it'll be, you're not putting in a lot of stuff. It'll be quite quick. Okay. Can I put in like a lot? Yeah, just take it in and squirt it all in. Let's just see if we can see the bug then quickly. If it works well, we'll pour acid in there. Oh, okay. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing! No, that's not working. Oh, okay, just uh, can you pour some of the blue stuff into the acid beaker over there? Yeah. I am pouring the acid. Oh, blue stuff. Yeah, into the empty acid beaker. Into the acid beaker. Just pour like quite a lot. Okay. Alright, that'll be fine. Can you just leave it there? Let's add some more reactant. Can you open up the, the bottle over there? It's got some ke magic chemical powder. Magic. Okay, let's just be careful with the beaker on the ledge. Sorry. And then just don't pour. Just pour in a little bit. Um, into here. Yes, and to hold the beaker as well. Okay, there we go. Just pour in. I'll tell you when to stop. Pour some more. Pour, pour, pour. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now we got a lot. Oh yeah. Okay. Now you can see it's gone a little bit milky. It's busy dissolving. 
Okay. Oh, wait, let me just close this, otherwise. It's a good idea. You might get, I don't know, something climbing out of here. Can you? Okay, now, can you take the the little pipette, the little squeezy thing that's Aww. closest to you, oh, the closest okay. one, yeah. And then can you just stir the beaker? Just hold the beaker and stir it at the same time. Okay, I just want to try to dissolve as much as we can inside there. Okay, and let's just try and... Okay, that should be fine. We're not going to get much more. Okay, now what I want you to do is to take the acid, hold, um, holding the beaker just at the top, just to make sure it doesn't... Yeah, so we can see the color. Try to pour the acid in slowly. I am a crazy scientist. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> That's not coke. So. That's not coke. <laughs> but let's, so what we were able to do there is we were to pour out something called carbon dioxide. That's a greenhouse gas. Remember, it's that thing that's causing the planet to warm up. Oh. And so we were able to get. Yeah, sorry about it's that. It's hot in here. Yeah, maybe that's why. It's your fault. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so now remember, I showed you earlier. You can get a yellow color change. Let's see if you can give us that yellow color change. Keep pouring very slowly, and let's see what happens. Watch closely, kids. Keep going. Okay, just very slowly. I'm scared of the bubbles. Okay, that's good. Okay, now just let the bubbles go down. Let's try some more. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> this is like throwing ice into Coke. See how it's bubbling there. And it's starting to change color too. There we go. Oh, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, my bad. Oh, I should not do that, right? <laughs> it's fine, that's okay. <laughs> Whoops. That's why you wear safety glasses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's okay. We can clean this up, don't worry. No, no, it's fine. It's good. Can you just get some? I'll get some paper. Okay. No! That's why we don't have I am a failure! But don't worry, we knew what we were doing with this experiment and we've done it in a safe area and we can wipe it up safely. So that's all I can. Whoops. It's okay. Thank you. I'll, no, don't touch this. Okay, just take your gloves off and leave them in a safe area. That'll be fine. Over there. It's, a, it's not safe anymore. No, no, it is safe. We're just going to mop it up. Okay. This is the job for me. Just the job for me. Just the job. <laughs> that chemical engineers actually develop every little piece of a cell phone from the plastic to the small wires it's amazing it's awesome oh, that's actually true um, if you take most common products that uh, kids nowadays like to use uh, computers cell phones all that sort of thing all of the little plastic parts the metal parts the polymers all of that has had an engineer particularly a chemical engineer involved at some point so and next time you're on your cell phone just think about us how big is the role that you guys play in the development of medicine well, in medicine you have a lot of things like uh, the antibiotics we spoke about earlier, uh, different pharmaceuticals, things you can use. What we do is we develop the processes that allow you to get those chemicals. So we will take something and you've got a whole mixture of different components. You need to get out one very specific component. You need to make it very pure because it's going to go in people's bodies. So you can't have all sorts of impurities that make people sick or, you know, kill them or whatever. And uh, what kill we do them. is we develop processes Just that separate them. these out uh, very, very efficiently. Wow. So, so actually the development of medicine starts with you guys? Uh, in a way, that's true. Wow. That's amazing. Mm. I, never, I never knew that. The All next the time you get you sick say, or yeah. die, think of chemical engineers. <laughs> yeah, next when time you, you die, you need to die. die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chemical engineers are highly versatile and there are four different fields to choose from, ranging from project engineering, design engineering, operations engineering, and research and development engineering. Well, chemical engineering, I would say, is more male-dominated. It's just, it appeals to guys more. Mm -hmm. uh, but you get a surprising number of girls, especially at R&D. I actually have a lot of friends here that are, are engineers. R&D is research and development. Oh, so. okay. Wow. And, um, yeah, you get a lot of girls actually working here. Uh, oh. More than I expected. Oh, okay. And some very pretty ones. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so what is ex uh, the difference exactly between uh, process engineering and chemical engineering? In fact, the two are very similar. Um, a chemical engineer like myself, here at SAS, I'm referred to as a process engineer. It's just a better description of what I do. 
um, I'm optimizing processes, developing new processes, doing that sort of thing. So they call you a process engineer, just so everyone knows that you're not a chemist or mm -hmm. working with, with chemicals per se. Um, obviously everything involves chemicals, but a chemical engineer is a lot, it's much broader kind of spectrum. You can do a lot of things. And a process engineer is more specific to what we do at Sassel, which is processes. Okay. okay. And, and well, well, you're a, you're chemical, a chemical engineer, engineer. Do, you, do you need chemistry? chemistry. You do, you, do. you need you to know what you're doing, doing. Uh, but, the but the chemistry side of things are actually handled by the scientists in the laboratory, so, so wow. they, will they will figure out some new reaction, reaction or mechanism, or mechanism they, they, they do that um, will benefit Sassel, Sassel. Sassel. And, then they and then they come to process engineer, engineer which, which is me, and they say we've got this awesome new reaction, what can we do with it, can we use some new chemical, and the important thing with that is always is economics, you want to know, will it make you money, you're not going to build something you're doing and you're going to lose your money, so that's what we do, we take the process, we build it up, we say what we need to get the chemical out, to purify it, to do everything we need, to sell, it, sell it, and then we have, we have a look, look at the economics, economics figure out if this is going to make us money. money. So, so if you're, if you're not into chemistry, chemistry, but you love solving problems, problems and you like maths, and you like, and you like, like then you can actually make a chemical engineer. Absolutely, Absolutely. Wow. to make sure you your courses, courses, courses at varsity. That's true. Right. Right. <laughs> and then as, as, as of from university, where do you go from there? What's your first step that you take until the day that you retire? Okay. A lot, a lot of people, people just do a straight, straight BSc degree, and they'll come, come here and they'll start, start working work, work, as a plant engineer. engineer. What, what I do is I work, I work at research, research development, it's a little bit different, different. you study, study a little bit further, further. you do maybe, maybe a master's or a PhD, or PhD something like that, that. so you're a little bit better qualified. qualified. And you come you and work here, and you generally, as most things, start at the bottom. But that's a very structured system, they actually have mentorship programs in place that are designed to get you to do the work you need to move forward. You have a line manager, it's his job to make sure that what you're doing, the work you're doing, it's good, it's good enough, enough to get promoted, promoted. And, and so, so there's, a, there's, there's a very different, different real, real path to take you on your need to from I um, started on, on level 7, I'm um, um, level, level 6, 6, I'm on level 5, five. Um, and, and that's all moving, moving forward, forward up to higher, higher, higher and higher management. management. So, so I will now, I'll now run, run um, a project, project myself, so I'll, I'll be in charge, 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 the staff. The work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to do a lot of work. work. Um, yeah, so, so. Yeah, they're actually running around. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, and I'll pass a little bit, bit. And, and the next step, step is up to management. management. And then I'll, I'll be a line manager, manager make sure other, other people, people then need to give me Would Absolutely. you say in this line of work that imagination is more important than knowledge or the other way around? <laughs> You actually need both. Um, it's very much a balance, especially for R&D. You need to be creative as well. You're developing new processes. You're looking at, at new things. Um, we do a lot of problem solving as well. Guys on the plant have a problem. They come to us and say, yes, we don't know what to do. And then we have to figure out what's going on, first of all. How are we going to solve it and then implement that solution as well? So there's that creative problem solving side. Um, I do that on a day-to-day -day basis. So, I, But to, in order to do that, you need to have the knowledge to say, hey, this will work or no, it won't. If you speak hydrogen and oxygen, what do you do with them? We use, we the, use hydrogen the hydrogen as part of our reaction. reaction. Um, inside, inside our, our reactors, reactors, we have, we, we, we take, take in the, in the gas, gas, which is normally a lot, a lot, a lot of methane, which is CH4. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, react we react that with oxygen, oxygen and you get to get CO. And and we react that with hydrogen to form hydrocarbons, which are long carbon chains with hydrogen molecules attached. And that's pretty much what we do here. That's what's in your Chemical engineers work in international companies as well as smaller companies in the following sectors energy, pharmaceuticals, food and drink, as well as gas and oil, such as Sassel, of course. Chemical engineers are also highly sought after in business and finance. For more information on qualifications and study opportunities in chemical engineering, please contact the following university. That was so awesome. Yeah. I mean, we learned that chemical engineers play with everything from the biggest machines down to the tiniest atoms and molecules. Yes, and just to make our life better. <laughs> yeah, nylon. <laughs> Who would have thought that bubbles were so deadly? You're evil. Well, that was really great. The best is yet to come. Yes, and I, for one, am a big fan of chemical engineering. You guys rock my world. Let's, Let's go, go back, back to, to base. 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 Does this look a base to you? Oh well, that's all we've got time for. I hope you had as much fun as I did. So join us next time as we investigate another exciting career, which might tickle your fancy, whatever your fancy might be, because we've got it right here on Just The Job. Until next time, bye-bye.
This program is sponsored by Sasol. Sasol, reaching new frontiers.